Well, hello there everybody and welcome back to another term of teaching tips with me, Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching it. So today I'm going to just talk a little bit about why I've discovered I like to use the term with all my students of invisible rests. And you know how sometimes you find a, a, a little term that is a really, really good solution to a problem and that's across the board with students so i use this with beginners with intermediate with advanced pupils with young with old um, doesn't matter they all get this idea of there being invisible rest let me just show you what i mean so for example here's a very well-known piece and there in the right hand is an example of some invisible rests you have two repeated G's. And of course, to play those two G's, you have to release. So although on the page it looks like two crotchets, you know, and they have to bang up, don't they, one next to each other, of course, we know as pianists that you can't do that, that you have to release if you're going to repeat a note. You do need to do a very, very tiny release at the end of it, okay? I said to a pupil yesterday, it's as much about how you leave a note as we all think about how to start a note, but not how to leave. But that's another, another teaching tip, I think. So here's our invisible rest. There, yeah. And of course, you know, there's a thousand and one ways you can do it. So invisible rests help the students to understand that actually it's not just what's on the page that you have to do, but there's all the stuff between the notes as well. Invisible rest can also be used, I found, um, as a good solution to the ends of phrases and this idea of breathing. Here's a piece, this is the um, Petrichor from Ion Audi, and this is in one of the uh, books from, I think it's Chester Music, yeah, um, Ludovic Ion Audi, Ready Pieces for Piano, this is the first book. This is the Petrichor version, have a listen. Lots of invisible rest there between the A's. where we need to lift, we literally need to lift our arms, but also we need to breathe, don't we? And we need to let the music breathe. And I have to say as pianists, we are not very good at our breathing. If you put, put somebody onto a clarinet or a flute, they have to breathe, they have no alternative. Pianists, we tend to not think about it and it is such an essential thing. So having a little invisible rest there is an absolutely crucial element of getting A, the move, the physical move, but also the musical movement. Here it comes. And so the student doesn't think they've got to push on forward. It might otherwise sound like this. It, it, yeah, okay. Yeah, there is something to be said that you could go on like that. I think it's nicer with the breath. And what I've done, I'll just show you very, very briefly on here. What I've done is I've written in my invisible rest look at the end. And I would ask my students to write those in as well. And put them in circles so that they know. So they're all quite used to me talking about this idea. Oh, that's an invisible rest. And they know what I mean. Here's one final piece to show you, just as another example. And this one from Foreign Lands and People by Schumann and again it can be played as one long sort of expressive line or we can put invisible rests in between really where the bar lines are some of them So, in the term invisible rests, I found to be a very good solution to helping students to pick up notes and repeat them in a musical way, the same note, 
and also to helping them breathe at the ends of phrases. Give it a go yourself and see whether it's effective with your students as well. I hope it is. Just to say that during the month of May, I'm going to have a bit of a theme going through my teaching tips and the theme is going to be looking at motivation and practice as well. So I'm going to be looking at motivation and practice all the way through the month of May. Do join me. I'm usually on a Wednesday, somewhere around between one and two o'clock British summertime. Um, so if you're in the eastern part of America, I think that's usually something like between eight and nine in the morning. So I could join you for breakfast. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching and hopefully see you again another Wednesday. Bye for now.